For the last few months, every time I had a tickle in my throat or a slight cough, I immediately asked myself, do I have COVID-19? I'm sure I'm not alone in having this kind of paranoia. And what would help all of us is a good test to determine both me and you if we currently have or once had COVID-19. Thankfully, there's a myriad of tests out there that you can use to find out if you have COVID-19 right now, or if you had it but have since recovered. But how accurate are those tests? In particular today, I want to focus on the accuracy of what are called antibody or serology tests. Those that tell you if you've had COVID-19 in the past but don't have it right now. What you'll be surprised to learn is that even tests that sound very accurate may not be. I'm Jeff Gallick, and on today's episode of Data Demystified, we'll talk about testing accuracy and understand how we should really be thinking about this very important issue. Before we get to testing for COVID-19 antibodies, we need to take a big step back and think about two very important and very different ideas, reality and test results. These may sound like the same thing. After all, if I take a test and it says I have the disease, isn't that the end of the story? Unfortunately, it's not. And that is because tests are not perfect measures of reality. Let's start with a simple example to make this clear. Imagine you spent the last few weeks working extra hard to lose 10 pounds. You trim down from 180 pounds to a cool 170. You've been eating less, exercising more, and generally being healthy. But it's hard to just intuitively know how much weight you lost, so of course, you step on a bathroom scale. Here, the bathroom scale reading is our result, and your weight loss is reality. Remember, if you lost 10 pounds, the scale doesn't matter at all. The reality is that you're 10 pounds lighter. Now, in a perfect world, you step on that scale, and it shows you that you lost 10 pounds. Great. Reality is the same as the result. No problem. But now imagine that the scale arrow is stuck on 180 pounds, your weight from before when you started dieting and exercising. When you step on it, even though you lost 10 pounds for real, the reading on the scale says you didn't. Here, the result given by a broken scale does not match reality. The scale can be broken a different way too. Imagine instead of dieting and exercising, you were a couch potato instead and didn't lose any weight at all. But your scale is getting old, the springs inside are getting rusty, and when you step on it, the scale reads 170 pounds. When in reality, you're still the same 180 you always were. Here, reality stayed the same, but the result showed that you lost weight. Again, the result does not match reality. The point is that even with a really good measurement tool or test, a result could be wrong. In particular, we can think of the state of this reality versus results as a box with four parts. We'll keep this really simple and say that the only two things that can be true in this example are that you are either 180 pounds, your original weight, or 170 pounds, your weight after dieting and exercising. But as we just talked about, our scale might also have two different readings, 180 pounds and 170 pounds. When you lose weight and the scale shows you lost weight, we call that a true positive. Reality changed and our measurement tool correctly reflected that. When you don't lose weight and the scale shows you staying your same 180 pounds, we call that a true negative. Nothing really changed and our measurement tool reflected that too. The problem creeps in in these other two boxes. Let's say you lose 10 pounds, but the scale says you're still 180. We call that a false negative. Reality changed, you really did lose 10 pounds, but our measurement tool made a mistake and didn't reflect that change. Our result does not match reality. On the flip side, let's say you didn't lose any weight, but your scale says you're now down to a trim 170. We call that a false positive. Reality didn't change, you're still 180 pounds, but our measurement tool made a mistake and incorrectly tells us that you lost some weight Again, our result does not match reality. At this point, you're probably thinking, what the heck does this have to do with COVID-19 antibody testing? The answer is that it has everything to do with COVID-19 antibody testing and any other kind of test for a disease. That's because those tests, like our bathroom scale, can make mistakes too. But the problem is that unlike weight loss, or maybe you have a good intuition as to whether you lost weight or not without ever stepping on a scale at all, 
The same is absolutely not true for antibody testing for diseases. Were those sniffles COVID-19 or just allergies? Was that cough COVID-19 or just a bit of dry air? Intuitively, we have no way of knowing. We need a test to figure that out. But those tests, even when they seem really accurate, might be even worse than our bathroom scale. Let's take a look at why right now. As a reminder, antibody or serology tests are ones that tell you if you once had COVID-19, but have now recovered and your body has the antibodies to hopefully fight off another COVID-19 infection. We can think of an antibody or serology test in the exact same way as our bathroom scale. It might work perfectly, but it also might not. In fact, medical tests like these can produce incorrect results for a variety of reasons, ranging from contamination of the testing sample, to human error, to difficulty in differentiating one type of antibody from another. That's not to say that these tests are always wrong, far from it. But just like our bathroom scale with a rusty spring or a stuck needle, antibody tests can, on occasion, provide incorrect results. To see if these types of errors are a real problem, just like our weight loss example, let's think about reality and results separately. Starting with reality, there are really only two possibilities. You had COVID-19 or you didn't. And with the test and results, we again can have two possible outcomes. The test says you had COVID-19 or the test says you didn't. Importantly, the test on occasion can be wrong in the same two ways that the bathroom scale can be wrong. Let's first look at the two easy cases. Here we see that if you really did have COVID-19 and the test says you did, that's a true positive and no issue here at all. Next, we can see the case where you didn't have COVID-19 and the test says you didn't. That's a true negative and again, no issue at all. The problem, like before, is in those other two squares. Here, we have the case where you really did have COVID-19, but the test says you didn't. That's a false negative and an example of when the test differs from reality. And in the other square, we have the case where you didn't have COVID-19, but the test says you did. That's a false positive and is another way in which the test differs from reality. This time, though, we're not dealing with weight loss, but with something a lot more important. And for all of us, false positives can be a huge problem. If COVID-19 is like most other coronaviruses, experts agree that you are likely to have some level of immunity once you've had the disease. If that's the case, then you are at a lower risk of reinfection and can perhaps return to a more normal life routine than if you never had the disease in the first place. But what if the test is wrong and tells you that you have COVID-19 antibodies, but you really don't? This type of error, a false positive, can be disastrous and even deadly in this case. This is why there is so much discussion about test accuracy. We often hear things like 95% accuracy or 99% accuracy, which sound great. But what I want to show you next is that even with these seemingly very large numbers, accuracy for this type of test can be quite terrible. And to understand why, we have to think about what we mean by accuracy. There are two main ways to define accuracy. But the one you likely care about is how accurate is the result that you get. That is, if you get a positive result, how sure can you be that you actually had COVID-19 and now possibly have some level of immunity? After all, that is the primary reason any of us take such a test. To answer this, we return to our diagram and focus on two of those squares. The first is the case of the true positives. As a reminder, this is when the test says you have had COVID-19 and you really did. What we have to do is compare that to false positives, or the situation when the test says you had COVID-19, but you never did. The reason that this comparison is so critical is because you, as someone who just gets a sheet of paper from a testing lab with a positive result, has absolutely no way to know if your result is a true positive, meaning you really did have COVID-19, or a false positive, meaning you didn't. Which means you have to ask yourself, how likely is it that I really did have it compared to this just being a fluke result and I never had COVID-19 to begin with? To answer that, we need to know two things. How common is the disease in general? And how often does a test come back with a false positive? For the first part, how common is the disease? This is actually a really tricky question to answer, but the best estimates from experts put infection rates somewhere between 2 and 5% of the population, at least for now. For the second part, we can look at what the labs that created these tests 
report as their false positive rate. That is, how often have they observed that the test reported a positive result when in reality, the person being tested was never sick? A recent academic paper reported that 10 tests that they examined had what's called a specificity of between 84 and 100%. Specificity is just the opposite of false positive rate. So we know that these tests tell people that they had COVID-19 when they really didn't, somewhere between zero and 15% of the time. To keep this simple and give the makers of these tests the benefit of the doubt, let's take a low estimate and say that the false positive rate for these types of tests is only 5% on the lower end of the range that was. 5% error doesn't seem like much on the face of it, but let's see what happens when we compare this to the actual disease prevalence. Again, picking 5% disease prevalence just to keep things simple. Let's look at 100 people who all take the test. We know that five of them will actually have had the disease because that's how common it is right now. So those five people will receive a test result that tells them that they had the disease. We also know that five other people will have not had the disease, but because the false positive rate is 5%, when they take the test, they'll also be told that they had it. And this brings us back to the problem of you sitting at home, opening up the lab results that tell you you have COVID-19. Are you one of those five people who really did have it? Or are you one of those five people who didn't, but the test was wrong? The answer is that you have absolutely no idea. What that means is that even though the false positive rate is only 5%, the chance that it is correct for you is only 50%, a coin flip. Think about that for a sec. The test makers tell you that the test is 95% accurate, but in reality, when you get a positive result, it's only about 50% accurate. What's even worse is what happens when that false positive rate goes up even a little bit. Let's say that it's 10%. Now you have a situation where 15 people get a positive result, but only five of them actually have had COVID-19. In other words, if you get a positive result, you are more likely to not have had COVID-19 than you are to have had it. This may seem like an argument for not taking antibody tests, and in some ways it is. For us to have very high confidence in these types of tests, they need to get much much more accurate. And they can. For instance, one recent test was found to have only a 1% false positive rate. If we work out the math for this, that means that if you get a positive result, you're about 84% likely to actually have had COVID-19. That's not a bad estimate, but even that can be improved on. It's also the case that the other kind of error, false negatives, that's almost never a problem in this type of a situation. We can quickly see why. Let's say the false negative rate, or how often a test comes back saying you didn't have COVID-19 when you actually did, is something crazy that it could never actually be, like 40%. That means that of the five people who really did have the disease, two of them, or 40%, will get a negative result. Now let's compare that to how many people don't actually have the disease, which is 95 people. Those are the people that'll get a negative result and actually weren't sick. That means if you get a negative result, you have no way of knowing if you are one of those two people who really did have COVID-19, but the test said you didn't, or if you're one of those 95 people who never had the disease and the test correctly indicated that. But that's not a big deal at all because the chance that you are one of those two people for whom the test is wrong, it's only about 2%. Because the disease is still relatively very uncommon, we don't have to worry much about false negatives. But as you saw before, we really have to worry about false positives. Now, I used a lot of numbers here, and I know that can be confusing and sometimes even intimidating. To help with that, I put together a very simple visualization that you can all play with to help you get the intuition of all of this. I'll put a link to it below, and you can put your own numbers in for how common a disease is and how often errors occur. By changing those values, you can see in the yellow section of the visualization how likely the test is to be wrong if you get either a positive or negative result. I'll post a short tutorial on how to use this visualization and we'll link to that below as well. I hope you find it useful. So where does this leave us? Are we completely lost in terms of testing for COVID-19 antibodies? Not at all. This is a new disease and these tests are all new as well. The history of scientific progress teaches us that this problem in testing accuracy can be overcome when well-intentioned and well-educated people work together towards a common goal. And what greater goal than helping us fight a global pandemic? Finally, I think it's worth thinking about what this all means beyond COVID-19 antibody testing. 
What we talked about today is a recipe for how we all should be thinking about any piece of information we get based on any kind of measurement tool. That could be a test for a disease, a bathroom scale, a thermometer, a home pregnancy test, or even a college entrance exam. To fully understand how accurate these measurement tools are, we need to carefully understand that measurement and reality don't always go hand in hand. If you found this interesting, please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, if there are topics in the world that involve data and you want to get a better intuitive understanding of them, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to create content meant just for you, my viewers. Until next time, be healthy, be safe, and see you soon.